So in the second part of our video about recursion, we're going to look at a code example of the effector operation, and then we will actually walk through one example and talk about some issues that come up in terms of recursion. So let's start with the code example. This is the factorial operation that we've seen in the previous video that I put in code in C. So this would be the recursive case. I'm just dividing it for you right now and I'll explain each case. And this is the base case. So as you can see in the recursive case there's a call to factorial. This is our factorial function and we have a factorial call right here. So we are finding the factorial operation using the factorial operation. We're defining a task using a smaller and similar subtask. So the way it works is that when a number is passed to us that is larger than one, what we're going to do is we will return, so this will be the solution, we will return the solution to the caller, which will be composed of the multiplication of that number that is passed to us and the factorial of that number reduced by one. So the moment you make this call, this will be put in a pause state. This return function or return statement right here will be put in a pause state. So we're going to call factorial once more and here we will leave the number that was passed to us. So if 5 was passed to us we will wait here we would have a 5 times and then we'd call factorial and let it work out. So it would come back right here but this time with 4. So 4 would come right here and then say the same question. 4 is it larger than 1? It is larger than 1 so we're still in the recursive case and then we would do the same thing. We would have another state right there where the n would be 4 and we'd call factorial again on 4 minus 1 which is 3 so we'd call it again on 3 and so on and so forth until at one point so you'd keep on reduce n, reducing n until you reach the point where n is equal to 1 and at this point you will simply return 1. When you return 1 then you will start working your way up from all of these calls where you would put the where you had already put them in a pause state then now you will replay them essentially so when you are working out the solution you put certain states of the function in a pause state so you had the factorial the first factorial call and then at one point there was a call for to another factorial so you put this into a pause you went to that call and you started handling this one and this one made another call to factorial so you put this into a pause and then you went to this one until you reached the base case where it basically said you know what I know the solution is just one for my case there is no call to a factorial and then you'd work your way back up and restore those ones that were put in a pause state now you know the solution to this part you had a multiplication right here suppose two now you know it's one so two times one you get the solution right here and that one you know the solution to it, you could return it to the other state of the function that was put in a pause mode and so on and so forth until you reach to the very end where it was called first and returned to the user the solution that they asked for. So if we looked at factorial of 3, factorial of 3 would come right here to the recursive case. It would call factorial of 2 times 3. Factorial of 2 we'd have to handle it in the same manner it would come right here. Factorial of 2 is equal to factorial of 1 times 2. So this is the recursive case. Factorial of 1 would come right here and factorial of 1 will be the base case. So it will simply return 1. Now we could go back and work our way up to the very beginning. So we'd come back and 1 give it back here. 1 times 2 is equal to 2. So now we know the solution to this. We give it back up to this state it would be 2 right here, 2 times 3 is equal to 6, and now we have the solution to factorial of 3, and we return 6 to the user. So this is essentially what is going on. So you're doing all of this using a few statements. This is the power of recursion. You could actually write some complicated idea, define it in terms of smaller subtask, and write it in a few lines, and you'd get all of this operation being performed using only these few statements. This is the power of recursion. Now there are a few things that we have to keep in mind. All cases must lead to a base case. If we have a point where it would simply go on in a loop forever and we did not have a base case that would handle it or the recursive case was faulty and it did not lead to the base case then we would be stuck in an infinite loop. A loop whereby there is just calls to the same function over and over again. And what would eventually happen is that you would run out of memory and you would have what, would, what is called a stack overflow. We, we say it's a stack overflow because when you're passing from one state to another, so you're pausing one state and making another call to 
the same function and, and starting another state right here, when you're pausing it, you're actually storing this on the call stack. So there's a stack in memory that's called call stack. We're, we're, we're storing the state of this function right here so we could retrieve it later on. If you keep on doing this forever in an infinite loop and kept on storing onto the stack all of these states that are in pause mode, then what would happen is that you would fill this and it would overflow, leading to a stack overflow. And so your execution would stop. So you have to make sure that your recursive case and base cases work together in order to solve the problem. Um, sometimes there will be the need for wrapper functions. We will need wrapper functions to solve a problem. So we might have a problem that requires something more than just recursion and a base case. We might have a problem that, for example, requires that we initialize some variables, create data structures, and then start making a recursive call. Then what you do is that you'd have two functions. You'd have one function that would essentially perform the initializations, create the data structure, and then it would call the recursive function. That recursive function is the one that essentially calls itself. It keeps on calling itself using whatever was initialized here, and then at the end it will return a value there, and then it would come back, and then you would return the solution to the caller. So this is called a wrapper function. It wraps the recursive function. Sometimes there is need for that, because like I said, you may need other uh, executions or other things besides just the recursion. You need to do other things besides the recursion. And so you need a wrapper function. So keep that in mind in solving all of your problems. Now let's look at the efficiency of recursion. There is, of course, we talked about the, the power of recursion. We said that we could express a very complicated idea with, a very, with very few statements, but there's also the fact that it is accompanied by a large overhead. And this is because, of course, of keeping or persisting the state. We're basically saving the state of a function. So a function would be executing and then you would interrupt it and save its state on the call stack like we said and then move on to create another uh, execution of that function and then be interrupted once more, save the state on the call stack and so on and so forth. All these saves are taking up memory and there's also the overhead of actually saving it. This is an operation that is being done in the background. So all of this of course is a large overhead that is associated with recursion. And we could avoid that by using the iterative solutions that correspond to these same recursion problems. You see, recursion is like a loop, right? We said that recursion basically just goes in a loop until it reaches a point where it stops, and then it comes back around, wraps back around. So we can do that. We could have this same thing, but using just a while loop or a for loop. So there's usually iterative solutions that correspond to those same recursion solutions that are much more efficient. Not always, but most of the time they're more efficient and they are usually not as simple to implement, but sometimes they could be just as simple. Like we'll see this example right here for the factorial. And there's no state overhead. You don't have to store the state. It's just a while loop or a for loop. So for example, the factorial function that we saw above, we could define it in using a for loop. So we would have, so first we would initialize a variable called result. This would be the result that we return to the user or the caller. So this for loop would essentially correspond to the recursion in a recursive function. So basically what we would have is while n, and this essentially makes sure that at one point we stop, we reach the base case, while n is larger than 1, what we're going to do is multiply n by the result, store that into the result, and then decrement n and then perform the same thing over and over again. This is basically factorial. Factorial of 3 is equal to 3 times 2 times 1, right? So here 3 is larger than 1, so we multiply 3 by the result which is 1 at the beginning, and then we store that end result, so we'd have a 3, and then we decrement 3. We'd reach 2 right here. 2 is larger than 1, we multiply 2 by the result, the result was 3 at that point, so we get that part right here, and then we decrement 2. 2 is equal to 1, so we stop right there. And and uh, 3 times 2 is 6, which is 3 times 2 times 1, same thing. So this this does the same thing as our recursive implementation of the factorial operation. And in this case, it is more efficient because we are not using this call stack. We are not storing the state 
onto the call stack. So there's no overhead in this particular case. Um, so you always want to keep this in mind and make sure that if you know how to implement the iterative solution and it is quite simple for you, then perhaps it might be a better idea to do it. And then finally, I just wanted to emphasize this point, which I already made. Uh, the recursion uses an implicit stack, which is the call stack, so it does this in the background. You could also implement recursion. If there's no obvious solution like this for loop, you could actually implement it using iteration, but doing so with an explicit stack. So you would define your own stack with a push and pop operation, and we have a video that explains that. You would define your own stack, and then you would perform everything that a recursion would, ha would have done, except you would define everything yourself, so that you wouldn't leave it to the implicit stack to handle that. So we would have an iterative equivalent of the recursion, however, using an explicit stack. So you would store the state of the variables onto the stack, and then put, pop them back out, and so on and so forth, reaching your ultimate solution.